Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Watch Gecko channel. I am here at Watch Gecko HQ in Tewkesbury, and I am joined by my dear friend and colleague Richard, live from his bunker, which I believe is not technically a bunker because a bunker has to be underground, doesn't it? And I'm definitely not underground, as you can see by the sunlight coming in the window next to me. But yes, it's. I'm sorry I can't be with you today. But hey, through the magic of modern technology, here we are. Now, Richard, I've got a question for you. Guess what I am wearing on my wrist today? Did you buy it at Watches and Wonders? Um, I didn't. I didn't. You know, it's it's incredible ah. because the, the, you, you can't buy anything at Watches and Wonders apart from a T-shirt and a book. So if you want to watch, you've gone to the wrong place. I think you're wearing your Tag Heuer Octavia. <laughs> I'm not, although I was yesterday. No, I'm wearing a Rolex. Um, but not just any Rolex. I'm wearing this Rolex. And it's a very special one for me because it's actually the first Rolex, the first serious watch I, was, I ever had or I was ever given. And as you can probably see, that is an Oyster Perpetual from, I would guess, the early 70s. This watch is... Um, it's as I said. It's it's the first proper watch I had. It was given to me when I was a teenager by my uncle. My uncle's a great watch collector, and he quite rightly uh, decided that I should be into watches too. Um, and he he bought me, I think, what a sixteen a Rolex, and look what he started. Wow, that man has a yeah. lot to answer for. He's got a lot to answer for. <laughs> so um, I wanted to talk about this watch because. It's a watch that means a lot to me. I don't wear it that often uh, for two reasons. One, because it is a watch that means a lot to me, so you don't really sort of like parade it too often. But the second one is a, is, is a more sort of practical, pragmatic reason, which, as you can see, the, um, the bracelet on this, which is the original bracelet, is um, far from at its best. Um, I think sort of like falling apart could possibly be a, a more accurate way of describing that. Um, not an uncommon syndrome, is it, for vintage Rolexes of this uh, era? It reminds me of the um, Starship One launch. What do they call it? it? It's ready for a rapid, unexpected disassembly. <laughs> I, think it is, I, think, I think this is exactly how, how it could be, um, except it would be entirely unexpected if it happened would be the only difference. Um, now, one of the things I love about it, do you, do you think, I mean, like, we, we, we can talk and probably will about Rolexes until the cows come home, but the Oyster Perpetual, isn't it the sort of, like, the archetypal Rolex, even more so than the uh, Submariner or any other? I mean, this is, for me, you think Rolex, and, and, and this is what I picture in my mind's eye. I completely agree. I mean, I've, I think, as we've discussed many an evening, um, that my Grail watch is a 1968 Rolex. There you go. Given my age away, a 1968 Rolex. But the one I would buy would be just a plain Oyster without the Cyclops or the Oyster date with the Cyclops. Because to me, you're right. It is, to me, the quintessential Rolex. It's interesting. I believe that this watch is from the early 70s. And without giving away my age, wouldn't it be remarkable if it was from 1974? I've not found this out yet, but what a coincidence if it is. It would be astonishing, and if it was from 1968, I'd probably have it off you. Absolutely. Well, look, let's um, let's uh, let, let's make it a mission to find out. Now, this watch is um, it started off with uh, a silver dial, and as you can see, over the years, I remember it actually being quite a silver dial, but over the years, it's developed this wonderful patina, which makes it even sort of more of a champagne colour now. And um, it's great. It's your archetypal uh, sports watch, which you can use for any occasion. I believe that, um, you know, you can wear this as comfortably in a ballroom as you could a boardroom or a bedroom. Um, it's, it's just a watch for every occasion. The only other watch, I think, in my collection that comes close is another Rolex, which is the Explorer 1. Another watch has spoken a lot about it. But this, for me, is where it all started. And this is why it's a very special watch. Uh, I used to wear it a lot. Um, and um, maybe because of that, that sort of increased the sort of, I don't know if you'd call it metal fatigue, what would you call it, um, of, the, of the bracelet? I've often wondered why. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here. If, if I look at the, the, the Oyster bracelet on my own Rolex, it is three pieces of metal, that move, that pivot with the two pins going through them, the screw pins. Th I'm this doing is, it as we speak. This is, this is, we are constantly reminded of being some of the highest quality metal that the watch industry uses. 
Now, I would think as watch straps got older, they would get uh, cloggier and more difficult to move. But uh, as dirt and grime accumulated over the, the decades, gets into the joints. But Rolex bracelets seem to get wider apart. The gaps get bigger and they get looser. This this can't this physically is a surely illustration of what you're saying. Look at this. There's no way that strap was like that when it was made. So I don't understand. And that metal physically can't be wearing away. Unless of course I'm wrong. Maybe it is. So how do these gaps occur? Please, somebody tell us. That is one for all the metallurgists out there, isn't it? How do these gaps occur? Um, all I know is that, you know, putting this watch on now is the equivalent of walking over a very wobbly suspension bridge. And that's a bit of a shame because that's part of the reason why I don't sort of wear it as often as I could. Here's what it looks like on. Um, I do enjoy wearing it, but, you know, I don't know. Um I'll wear it more often. Has the time, Richard, come to maybe consign this antique period original bracelet to history? I think it might be time to perhaps put it into the, the watch box. Because it would be a so. shame. I think you, so. you don't want to part with it. But, I don't, yes, I, I don't. agree. I think you need to think about a different mechanism of attaching said Rolex to your wrist. Because there comes a point, and this is the only downside, really, of a vintage Rolex, where the actual fragility of the bracelet sort of prevents you from wearing it as often as you'd like. And also, I'm interested as well, going back to what I was just saying earlier, is how long does it take for this to happen? Because I don't know how old your Explorer or your Submariner are, although I've seen both. But I can say with 105. Right, okay. Well, my Explorer 2 is 2003, and my Oyster bracelet is, to my mind, perfect. There's mm. nothing wrong with that bracelet. So did they make them differently back in the day? I don't know. I think I think it can only be that, because my experience is exactly the same. 2005 Explorer 1, 2005 Submariner. That bracelet, to me, feels as rock solid as it did um, exactly. the day I bought it. What's quite interesting is getting this watch out um, for the purpose of this video, um, I've noticed a marked deterioration, or maybe I just, you know, not was no longer used to it in how, how fragile that bracelet is, even from six months ago. One more thing I was going to ask you, if I may, is because I'm just trying to work on the date. Is it um, crystal or is it plexiglass, armoured, you know, plexiglass, plastic? It is plexiglass. I'm just, oh, just okay. feeling so, that yeah, Because the first Submariner I bought was the transitional model that went from armoured plexiglass yeah. to sapphire crystal. And it's... Um, yeah. I, I think the plexiglass adds to it. And that, of course, could be perhaps um, bringing on part of that champagne patina. Could it be the crystal itself? That could well be, couldn't it? Yes, look at that. That could could well be that. Um, because the other thing, too, is having, again, forgotten how wobbly the bracelet is, I'd actually forgotten how champagne-like the dial is. Because I remember this very much as a silver watch. When I got this, this was 100% what a silver watch. And um, now now it's sort of like got better with age, I'd like its wearer. And um, it's got this sort of wonderful, rich Chardonnay champagne hue, which is so good you could almost drink it, basically. Well, it is um, 1,300 hours as we're talking, so it's doable. Absolutely, absolutely, this is doable, isn't it? So, um, I think straps. the one conclusion is straps. this is a great watch, isn't it? Uh, I want to keep on wearing it, but um, you know, it's going to have a sudden unscheduled um, disassembly yeah. or whatever it's called in Musk language. Um, yeah. to avoid that happening, um, what shall I put on it in order to keep it secured to my wrist? Well, as Norm, which the, the, the what you can't see at the moment is my desk, which has a collection of straps on it, because um, I, it, it, that's the way it lives, because I've got watches strewn everywhere. Um, and I do happen to have my own um, oyster here, and I think that my oyster Let's looks look. absolutely outstanding on. Drum roll, please. I think I know what's coming. No. I do know what's coming. Absolutely, yes. That is the, um, Zulu, the, Zulu, the Zulu Diver Vintage Bond. Right, um, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to put it on there and we're going to see what it looks like and uh, we'll drop in a photograph of the video possibly uh, the video there the classic bond which also i vintage bond 
or classic Bond. Both of those, I think, would look great on it. Because didn't we joke just recently, doesn't everything look better on a classic Bond? Well, yes, it does. It does. And we'll be answering that question very shortly. So I, th- I, think, I think possibly the next image you'll see on this video will be this watch with one of the Bonds, or maybe with both the Bonds, and we'll just see what people think. The other suggestion I had, which I think is possibly, um, it may even be bordering on sacrilegious because I'm putting something modern on something beautiful and vintage, is a two-piece like piece Mayday sailcloth. Oh, now that is an interesting Which you option. can see currently being here, sported by my titanium Seamaster. It looks very good, it, doesn't it? Now, see, I think that, because it's quite simple, because it does give that leather look, yet it has that durability, could bring back perhaps a little bit of that Rolex toughness to your old watch. And I think we're making a bit of history here because I think this watch has never been on any other strap other than this bracelet that is that is come on. And if all else fails, I haven't got one in front of me here, but I can't believe any of our audience don't know it. There's always a beautiful leather like the Vintage Highly. The Vintage Highly is always an absolute classic. I think it's going to be one of those. We're going to try some out, and then we will um, uh, report back and, and, and see what people think. But, yeah, which strap is uh, best on this Rolex? I'm hoping that this will give it a new, not a new lease of life, because the watch itself has got plenty of life in it, but a new lease of wearing life. Um, because this is what these watches are all about. They're all about being enjoyed. Now, whilst I'm very fond of this watch, what I've done is not worn it enough. So what are my sort of resolutions? It's a bit late for new year resolutions, but one of my ideas for this year is to get the strap changed and to wear this watch much, much more often. Uh, I can't wait to see it in its new guise and its new life. Thank you very much. Uh, Richard, what are you wearing today? I'm wearing um, a brand new, uh, and I do mean literally brand new, um, Flat Dark Earth Casio AE15000. I feel a whole new other video coming on about this. We can't just sort of like let that pass um, because, uh, yeah, that looks quite something. And I believe you've had a few adventures with it as well. I did, and that's a story for another day. And on that bombshell... We shall leave you. (laughs) Adios.